What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. Today we are checking out the latest phone from Yumi Digi called the A1 Pro. Now even though the name sounds kind of fancy, this is just an entry level device and you can find it for about $100. For that price, we get the new MediaTek 6739. This is a quad-core CPU, but this is an entry-level CPU. And we also have 3 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of internal storage. Now, out of that 16 gigs of internal storage, we only have about 9 gigs left after the operating system. But the phone can also take an SD card, and that SD card can be used as internal storage. So running out of space is not going to happen anytime soon. And aside from that, of course, we have Android 8.1. Now, this phone is interesting because it supports more bands than any other budget phone from China and you can easily buy this phone and use it in the US on 3G and on 4G and that's not something that I could have said before for a lot of other budget phones from China. So very happy to see that they finally included all those extra bands so the phone can be used anywhere in the world. The phone itself doesn't look bad, it's fairly small and um, it's easy to use holding it in one hand and we have a combination of glass, metal and plastic. So the back of the phone is made out of plastic and it looks good as long as it's clean but keeping the phone on clean it's kind of close to impossible. So you're always gonna see fingerprints on the back. So on the back there we have two cameras, we have the flash and we also have the fingerprint scanner. That fingerprint scanner is accurate 9 out of 10 times but as we've seen in the past is not the quickest so after you press the fingerprint scanner it takes about a second a second and a half for the screen to come on and that could become annoying um, if you're using that fingerprint scanner a lot so definitely not the fastest one that i've seen on a budget phone on the right hand side of the phone we have the power button and the volume keys the buttons are made out of um, metal and they are nice and clicky so no complaints about them and at the top we have the slot for the sim card so this device can take either two sim cards or a sim card and an sd card Nothing on the left hand side and moving all the way to the bottom of the device there we have the microphone, we also have the 3.5mm audio jack, we have a USB-C port and of course the speaker. Now the speaker doesn't sound too bad, it lacks bass but um, for a phone around $100 I think it sounds good enough. But here is a quick sample so you can hear how the speaker sounds. We get the same average sound quality from that 3.5mm audio jack but at least we get an audio jack because with a lot of phones these days um, we don't even see an audio jack. As for that um, USB-C port, well um, the phone uh, supports OTG and it takes about 2 hours and 10 minutes to fully charge it from 0 to 100. And since we are talking about charging, well inside this phone we have a 3150mAh battery. So you can go for about a day on one charge and out of that you can get between 4 and 5 hours of screen on time. And um, well, I was expecting a bit more from that new CPU, but um, yeah, the battery life isn't the greatest, so you may be able to make it through an entire day, but um, you may have to charge the phone throughout the day as well. So definitely not the best battery life out there. And moving to the front of the device, there we have a 5.5 inch IPS screen with an 18 by 9 screen ratio and a 720p resolution. As we've seen in the past with many Yumi Digi devices, the colors on the screen are very vibrant and the viewing angles are also very good. And the touch sensitivity is just um, average so nothing spectacular and the screen can register up to 5 touches at the same time. Just above the screen we have a 5 megapixel front facing camera that can also be used for face unlocking. Now the face unlocking works fairly quick, not the quickest out there um, and it really depends how much light it's hitting your face because if you don't have enough light it's not gonna work um, that well. As for a front facing camera, well the picture quality isn't amazing. If you have plenty of light the pictures turn out kind of okay but as soon as you don't have enough light they become very blurry and very grainy. And since we are talking about cameras we might as well talk about the rear camera. So on the back we have a 13 megapixel camera and a 5 megapixel camera. Now unfortunately the second camera doesn't seem to work or doesn't seem to do anything. So if you're taking those pictures to the bokeh effect or the portrait mode as they're called for other devices well, that bokeh effect doesn't look that well and it's definitely software generated. So yeah, no bokeh effect um, with this phone. As for the regular looking pictures, those one look okay and I think better than other Yumi Digi devices that I've seen in the past. The colors are very vibrant and the, the pictures are somewhat sharp as well. But um, as soon as you take pictures in low light, well, those pictures don't um, turn out that great. They are very blurry, very grainy and um, well, not good at all. So the cameras on the back of this phone are just average, but I guess for a phone around $100 they're acceptable. 
Performance-wise, well, the phone is exactly what you'd expect from a budget phone, and even though we have that new MediaTek 6739, I can't exactly tell the difference in between this and a phone that um, was using the MediaTek 6737. But um, the scores that we get on the Antutu Benchmark and the Geekbench 4 are somewhat better for this one. Since the phone is running Android 8.1 and we have a very light skin on top of that Android, the phone performs very well for moving in between screens and switching in between apps, but you're definitely gonna notice some lag, well I don't know if we can call it a lag, but you're gonna notice a bit of a delay whenever you're opening apps. If you give apps a couple of seconds to load the content after you open them, scrolling through your feed is done decent enough, but obviously not as good as you'd find on a flagship device, but that was to be expected because we have an entry level CPU. So take for example the Facebook app, um, there is lag for that app, but um, there is lag for that app for pretty much any device. The Instagram app does much better and um, if you are um, watching videos on YouTube, the maximum resolution is 720p and you can also zoom in uh, so you can take full advantage of that 18 by 9 screen ratio. Gaming is also possible but don't expect that you are going to be playing some heavy games on this device. So for example, I tried PUBG because everyone is crazy about this game and even on the lowest settings you can still see some lag whenever you are playing. Not to mention that the battery drain whenever you are playing games is pretty insane. So you can go from 0 to 100 in about an hour or if you're gaming. Now if you're gonna play some lighter games like Traffic Rider that one works great and uh, just keep in mind that uh, this phone is not powerful enough um, to play those heavy games. And we are moving on to the GPS unit inside this phone. So it takes the phone now on 30-40 seconds to find your location. So definitely not the fastest GPS um, unit out there. And depending where you are, you may see the phone losing your location every now and then and then having to find it once again. Of course, you can use Google Maps, but as I said, the GPS unit is not the best out there. Now, surprisingly enough, the phone has more sensors than most budget phones that I've seen around $100. And that includes a gyroscope as well. So you could technically use this phone as a VR headset and that was unexpected because I was really expecting just to have like a proximity and a light sensor but no we have a lot a lot of sensors available with this device and we are moving on to connectivity so the phone supports dual band Wi-Fi which once again it's kind of unheard for for budget phones and we also have 4G connectivity and as I mentioned earlier in the video we have a lot of band support so you can definitely use this phone in the US for AT&T and T-Mobile which again for budget phones it's not something that we usually see the call quality is also decent but I wish the speaker on top here would get somewhat um, louder. As for the speeds over the 4G network and the dual band Wi-Fi, they're also good and um, decent for a phone around $100. And it's time to conclude this video. So pretty much everything about this phone is average or just below average. So the cameras are average, the battery life is average, the screen is pretty decent, I can't say anything uh, bad about the screen. And the, the main selling point for this device is the fact that it supports some 4G bands in the US. But other than that, um, if you don't live in the US and you can spend a few more um, dollars, you can get something better than this, um, like the Xiaomi Redmi 5 or Redmi 5 Plus and so on. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you did like it, press that like button, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one, thanks for watching.